The School for Good and Evil is an adaption of a book series by Soman Chinani, and the latest fantasy film explores the complexity of morality in fairy tales by telling a unique story of two best friends that end up in the School for Good and Evil. Sophie has always aspired to be a princess, but when the Storian chooses Agatha for the School for Good and not her, the big question arises, why Agatha? Well, we'll be answering that question today. First, let's dive in to why Agatha was sent to the School for the Good. Agatha had always been a misfit in Avaldon, and people saw her as a witch or an oddball, and so it surprised her and her best friend when the girl ended up in the school for good. Agatha's unruly hair and her mother's passion for making herbal concoctions makes her seem like the perfect candidate for being a witch in the school for evil, so Storian's choice seems odd at the beginning of the film. Agatha and Sophie firmly believe there had been a mistake, and who could blame them? Sophie looked like a princess even before she knew the school existed, and the twist in their fates made the girl rebel against the system, and their differences in positions forced them to see each other and themselves in a different light. Things got interesting because the more they rebelled against the Storian's choice, the more they got sucked into embodying it. And when the Dean recognizes and calls Agatha a true princess when she sacrifices her wish to save another person's life, it is apparent that while Agatha is good, Sophie isn't entirely evil, like the Academy suggests. Next, let's discuss why Agatha thought she didn't belong in the school for good. From the moment she steps foot in the school, she feels things aren't right, and Agatha quickly recognized the prejudice in the system and how it mistreated its pupils in many ways. When she began to notice their archaic takes on morality and the severe punishments they resorted to, Agatha knew she was in the wrong place. And who could blame her? The school turned its failing students into creatures for life. Isn't that scary enough for what it is? There was also a clear status quo in the school, and the student body had an unfavorable view of students on the path to becoming future villains. In the eyes of her best friend, Sophie was a completely good person, but the Evers still viewed her as inferior because of her association with the school of evil, and this made Agatha feel uncomfortable about the whole thing, and she didn't want to stay in the school. Now, let's talk about why Dovey thought Agatha was the school's first true princess in years. When Agatha used her wish to save a soul from punishment instead of using it for personal gains, her actions clarified she was empathetic. Seeing her free a former student from a life of granting wishes as punishment made Dovey the school's dean and realized the goodness inside Agatha. The young girl's kindness moved Dovey so much that she claimed she was the first true princess she had seen in years. Agatha was also really kind and compassionate. She spent most of her time trying to help her friends or the people around her, and this is a sharp contrast to how the rest of the students at the school acted. Most of them were so preoccupied with superficiality, they did not mind leading predestined lives chosen for them. Agatha represented what the school's core values were supposed to be, so having her as a princess meant the system could finally change. She pushed students and teachers to confront their biases and the rules they followed without question. After all, the school carried on with inhumane rules like turning students who fail into creatures. And Agatha's strong-willed take on the entire system forced students and teachers to recognize their complacent behaviors. Thanks to Agatha's firm beliefs, the Academy recognized no person is fully good or evil, and boxing people into categories only harms them. And because of her, they recognize the gray area in morality. Moving forward, these qualities make Agatha the perfect fairy tale hero. Agatha might think she ended up in the school for good by mistake, but she's not only a good person, but also the perfect fairy tale hero. And here's why. She's loyal to her best friend, and loyalty alone is a quality that the best fairy tale characters always possess. And Agatha never stops believing in her friend or trying to help her at every point in the story. Even when Sophie begins to question Agatha's intentions and grows jealous of her, Agatha remains true to her only friend. She shapeshifts, sword fights, and plots her way through obstacles for the greater good of Sophie. If that is in hero behavior, I don't know what is. Her character is also kind and has a big heart, which is a must for every fairy tale protagonist. And she not only saved a student from being a wish-granting creature, but she also risked her own life to save Gregor from running away. And in the end, Gregor is punished, but Agatha remains the only person vocal about his mistreatment by the school. She was strong enough to withstand a majority that didn't see any problem in the school's ways. Lastly, Agatha is brave. We all know that the best fairy tale characters are full of courage. She doesn't shy away from trying to fight Raphael alongside Tedros, or always having Sophie's back in moments of uncertainty. And she's got wit and grit to fight and stand for what she believes in. All in all, we think she has all the markings of a lead fairy tale character. Moving on, Charlize Theron and Carrie Washington had fun playing their extreme characters. Charlize Theron played the Dean of the School for Evil, while Carrie Washington played the Dean of the School for Good. Lesso and Dovey were characters that were extreme opposites in both personality and nature. While Lesso was dark, tall, and intimidating, Dovey was sunny, warm, and sweet. Theron and Washington met each other for the first time on set in Belfast, and they instantly became friends over motherhood because both of them had young children. Theron says that the actor 
characters that are also mothers usually instantly get along because they understand each other's exhaustion and struggles. Theron has two young daughters, while Washington has a son and a daughter. And Theron says she was instantly inspired when she watched Washington act from afar. She describes the star as effortless. Initially, the actress says she was intimidated, but she quickly used the feeling to get into her role in a better way. And for Washington, her character was unlike anything else she'd been used to, so it was a challenge in many ways. The two actresses enjoyed playing Lesso and Dovey immensely and had a lot of fun on set along the way. And the two agreed they had a lot of fun playing each other's extreme versions and teasing each other along the way. Next, this is what made Charlize Theron excited to play Lesso. Charlize Theron has played many impressive antagonists, from a dark queen to a cyber terrorist. And she was wrapping up work on Fast and Furious film when she was approached by director Jeff Kirschenbaum to work on a character that might appeal to her preteen daughters. Since Theron's kids are still young, she jokes that they'll have to be older to see the, the film their mother's being in. And the prospect of playing in a fantasy film that her daughters might also enjoy excited the actress. When she broke the news of the role to them, she watched their eyes light up at the mention of villains and princesses. And soon, she began reading the books to them. They seemed to enjoy the books so much that Charlize Theron was pleasantly surprised that she got to share a special moment with them. Her daughter's excitement rubbed off on Theron, and she couldn't help but look forward to the role. During Theron's first fitting, director Paul Fagg handed her a stick, and she describes that moment as magical because the antique cane put together the whole character. She had so much fun with them, she ended up breaking most of them and had to send them to a distant antique shop that specialized in fixing old canes. We imagine the shop must have been amused by constantly having to fix the actress's sticks. Finally, here's what Charlize Theron and Carrie Washington felt about the film. Theron thinks the film's storyline talks about something urgently needed in today's world. The actress discussed how we're prone to putting things in compartments these days to feel less fearful of what they might represent. Labeling things as good or bad helps people feel more in control, but that's ultimately not how the world works because real people are complex beings. She likes how the school for good and evil explored the complexity of morality and how we should approach these questions with empathy instead of seeing them as black and white. Washington says the biggest driving factor for her to do the role was because the film doesn't treat morality in binaries. She explains she feels that good and evil are much more complex than what the Academy in the film believes, and the actress believes that in the real world, we live in gray areas and have both the potential for evil and good, and we think that's a great way to describe the film's portrayal of morality. And that's a wrap for this video. What do you think of the Storian's choice for Agatha? Let us know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next one.